Welcome to the new vlog, friends. And in this video, I'm going to show you my last days in wonderful city of Barcelona. I will be answering your questions about life in Spain, such as cost of living, things I like and dislike, safety, and more. We will visit some cool places of the city and simply wander around. Are you ready? Let's go! Good morning, my friends. Um, as I mentioned to you in the previous videos, I'm living right now in my mom's friend's apartment. And recently we had a call. We discussed, I don't know, some updates for the project. I told her about my life in Barcelona. And then she asked me if I already check out the pool on the rooftop. I'm like, excuse me, there is a pool on the rooftop? She's like, yeah, you should check it out. So guess where we're right now. Absolutely amazing, I could only dream about it. Okay guys, so it's happening. Uh, I packed all my stuff. I almost all my stuff. I still have one day. But this is crazy to think that three months just passed so quickly. Um, but we still have one evening and one full day, so let's make it worth it. Since our world is changing rapidly right now with the technological revolution, I decided to check out the new exhibition here about digital impact. I think it should be super interesting and let's see what it looks like. And by the way, today I think once or twice per week there are discounts, 50% sale and I exactly came in time for that. I will be honest with you. Initially, I was impressed when I just looked at the art objects. They seemed cool at the first glance. However, as I spent more time checking them out, my interest went a bit. Many of them turned to be less interesting and some even seemed strange and unremarkable, so I didn't quite understand this exhibition. It's about connection between online, digital and offline worlds. They want to say that when we go online, we are not becoming less humans. For example, this art piece emphasizes the role of language in global connection. The second represents our desire for social acceptance and validation. This one is about the importance of shared knowledge and collaborative creation. And the big one reflects our modern guest for love and connection a technology-driven world. It's very interesting, especially with GPT chat that is developing so quickly, just in a few months, it's already becoming bigger and bigger. And who knows what's going to be in the future. Even right now, I'm for creation of my YouTube videos, I use sometimes GPT chat, like to cr maybe create some catchy phrase or whatever. Uh, very interesting. As for exhibition, overall it's interesting, but I don't think it's gonna cost 15 euros because I think there are not many art pieces and the one that that has been shown, I can't call them super impressive. For 7 euros, totally fine. For 15 euros, I think I would regret it a bit. One thing that I dislike about this exhibition is that there is no information written in English. I, there is a code that you can scan and read it from your phone, but sometimes, you know, it's great just to see it next to the item that you are looking at. And in general, I actually receive quite a few questions. Is it possible to live in Spain without knowing Spanish language? And also, uh, what is my level of Spanish? Well, first of all, I'm going to reply to the second question. Uh, I know basic Spanish, what it means. I can order something in the bakery, in the restaurant in Spanish language. Uh, also on the streets, I might understand what people are talking to me even though it's quite difficult for me to speak to, to answer them in Spanish language. I studied Spanish a few years ago and unfortunately I forgot quite a few things but I'm trying to keep up with this and in general I think you really need to know Spanish language to live in Spain especially if you plan to work here or I don't know hang out with some friends and etc because not many people speak English in Spain and if in Barcelona and Madrid it wouldn't be such a big problem in all, other, in all other places, you need to know that. Well, some of my friends were asking me why I don't go to the beach in Barcelona. Guys, just look at this map. Everywhere. 
just add a little bit. Well, even though it's 7 p.m. right now, it's still quite hot. So I decided to hide in the shadow right now and reply to your next question about the safety in Barcelona. Barcelona is famous around the world about pickpockers. And worth to mention that when I've been here six years ago, I saw twice how the bags were stolen. So right now I haven't seen that. And to be honest, I feel quite safe. Once again, I'm not walking at night in some sketchy districts. If I walk at night, it's just in the city center. So over Overall, I feel very safe here, especially after living in Turkey. But on the other hand, when my friend from Madrid moved here, she said that Madrid was much safer than Barcelona. So I believe it's all about perspective, but overall, I feel very safe here. Heading back home, I saw a beer fair, and that's precisely what I loved about Barcelona. There seems to be celebrations happening every day. The city offers numerous fantastic events, traditions, and places to visit. Another thing that I adore is Spanish cuisine, which happens to be one of my favorites. Additionally, I cherish the fact that it's sunny most of the time, something I truly miss back in Russia. The surrounding nature and charming towns also captivate me, and above all, I appreciate the Spanish lifestyle, where the focus is on working to live, rather than living to work. Speaking about things that I dislike, one of the most important things is the taxes. If I would like to register my YouTube and be an independent entrepreneur in Spain, I will have to pay 50% for taxes from my income. And this is a lot. Uh, let's imagine I get $1,200 per month. I will have to pay $600. And this is a lot. One thing is when you get, let's say, 5,000 euros, 10,000 euros per month, then paying 50 percentage, you will live on that. But I don't get such money. And also, if I'm not making a mistake, once in six months, you need to pay 600 euros to be able to be a freelancer. So anyways, this is huge amounts of money. And when you don't get like a big salaries, it will be super problematic. And another problem that stops me to move into Spain permanently is the problem of occupation or occupas. I mentioned in my last video about this. So if you haven't watched it, take a look at this. Uh, basically, some people can just enter your house and you will be able to do nothing. You're just gonna lose your home. And there are also two small issues that I dislike in Barcelona, but again, it will not make such a big difference. First of all, often there is no air conditioner in metro. So sometimes when it's super hot and you're waiting for the train in metro, it's so hot, like you start sweating immediately. And another thing is the lack of parks. There are not many parks in Barcelona, and this is something I really missed. Good morning, my friends. It's Monday today and it means that it's my last day in Spain and in Europe in general for probably quite a lot of time. Uh, but I'm excited. I actually woke up around two hours ago and I started cleaning the apartment. Uh, right now we will go to gym, the last training, and then I need to cancel my membership probably have some breakfast and then go for a walk because I had some things to do in the city and I'm gonna take you with me and reply to the rest of the questions. So let's go. Alrighty, so I already returned home, went to shower and prepared breakfast right now. Uh, probably I will watch YouTube for around 20 minutes and then I will continue cleaning the apartment. Also, I'm waiting right now my clothes from the washing machine to be to be ready uh, so I can dry it before my trip. And uh, during this time, I'm going to finish cleaning the apartment and I'm going to buy some products to my parents because uh, I actually firstly go to Turkey and then to Russia and I want to buy some sanctions products to my parents that they can't find in Russia, such as Hamon, for example. And before I start eating my delicious breakfast, I also want to reply to another question if Barcelona is my favorite city in Spain. Worth to mention that when I've been here six years ago, I didn't have very good impressions of this trip. It's not about Barcelona, but this is about um, 
that I was with the wrong people. And it was super hot in August here. But I remember that it was super beautiful. I also visited Madrid three years ago, right before the pandemic, and I fell in love with the city. That's why I was thinking that I prefer Madrid. But after living three months, three wonderful, amazing, super memorable in the best way months, I think Barcelona is my favorite. I can explain also why. And in Madrid, you can't really find the nature around so much. While in Barcelona, there is sea, there are mountains, and you can just take a train and you're in a beautiful, breathtaking scenery. In Madrid, you need to drive longer. In this case, Madrid really remind me of Moscow a bit. Uh, but I do prefer nature a lot and Barcelona really combines big city vibes and also nature around so I think I vote for Barcelona. Many of you ask me if I have a health insurance here in Spain, and yes, guys, I do. I never travel without this anywhere. I have a Mapfe or something like this. Here is the name, uh, and it's actually considered to be one of the best insurance here in Spain. I paid 60 euros per month, and actually, right now, I'm in laboratory taking my results, blood results, because uh, since I have insurance and I already pay money for that, I decided why not to have a checkout. Usually, I do once in six months checkout of my blood and something like this. And why I'm here, I really wanted to show you this clinic because this is absolutely amazing. And I think this is how hospitals should look like. Obviously in Spain, public hospitals are not like that. As my local friends told me, they're quite shitty. Um, but the private ones look amazing. Here I want to make a note that everybody here in Spain told me that the medical system is amazing. And maybe the public hospitals, they don't look so good, but the doctors here are very qualified and the quality of life because of the um, medical system here is quite well. I went on a very small shopping and bought a few things, so I decided to return a taxi from them. Do you want to hear something interesting? I was returning the tax free and I talked with a lady and when she saw that I'm from Russia, she asked me about the amount of that, that I bought. I said it was 90 euros and she said, okay, it's good because if you bought for 300 euros, I will not be able to return the tax free because of sanctions. No more than 300 euros. And I asked uh, what will happen otherwise if the amount would be more than 300. The lady said that they just won't be able to return the tax free but i also saw some videos that rich russians were buying some brands and when they wanted to return the tax free uh, the people from the airport were taking these brands from them and i asked if it's possible she said that since it's a prior company no but in the airport it's possible a little bit about the reality i mean it makes sense though makes sense Before leaving, I really wanted to show you this amazing bar that my local friend showed me. It looks so atmospheric, there are trees inside of it, some fountains and the light. It's next to the one museum that I know visited, but this place is super atmospheric and I really recommend you to visit. I really wanted to try sangria for the last time of this trip, uh, the best the best of Spain. Uh, and it costs just 4 euros, so I think the price here are nice. Messi here, don't care. Well, no, I do care. Wait. Oh my god. Returning home is always next to the sim. 
the water is quite warm by the way and another question that I get quite often is um, if Spain the country where I would like to live permanently and from all the countries I've been to and it's around 40 countries there are only two cities where I see myself living and it's London and now it's Barcelona and considering the fact that London is super expensive right now and incredibly difficult to move there well Barcelona right now is the top of the list by the way I think because of the problem that I told you about about the lack of water now on the beaches all the showers are closed well that's very sad And in the end, it was time for grocery. Tell me that you're in Spain without actually telling it. Come on everywhere. And of course, I bought some to my friends and family. After our wonderful walk, I returned back home, had a lunch slash dinner because it would be totally fine for me, uh, and continue cleaning all the apartment. Uh, you probably can see that I'm super hot. Everything is almost ready. The only thing left is just to uh, clean the floor with water. That's all. And I already can feel how much I'm gonna miss Spain, so I decided to go for another walk and maybe have a drink somewhere. I will see about this. But before I go, I decided to reply to another question of yours, which you ask me a lot. And this is about the cost of living in Barcelona. Worth to mention that Barcelona is considered to be expensive city in Spain. Uh, even it's more expensive than Madrid, the capital. So this is something for you to consider. For example, if you go, if you want to move somewhere cheaper, probably you should go to the south. Um, but I had a chance to live in Barcelona. So let me share about my expenses. As I already mentioned to you, I don't pay anything for the apartment because this is apartment of my mom's friend. She's super kind, agree. She was super kind and let me stay here for free. Uh, but in average, one studio gonna cost around 700 euros, 600 euros in Barcelona. Uh, one room, two bedroom apartments in a good district around 1,200 euros. As for water, it's usually around 20 euros per month if you live alone. Electricity here, I'm not so sure, but I think it's around 50 euros per month. I pay 60 euros for insurance and it's considered to be very good insurance. I also bought a special transport card that costs 20 euros and I can use any public transportation in Barcelona. For gym membership, I was paying 30 euros per month. For groceries, it's a bit more difficult, guys, because I usually buy a few things once in a few days. So, but I think it's around 30 euros Per week something like this for going out i spend usually around 20 euros it's usually a drink and some dishes often i go with my friends and we share it between each other as for entertainment it's honestly so different for cinemas i pay in average seven euros um, as for museums, I most or actually most museums that I visited in Barcelona were free because often in the museum there is a free day, usually once in a week, in a certain time, which you can book online and then go for free. So, but if not, it really depends uh, from 7 euros to 20 euros, depends on the museum. Well, I hope you have a better idea right now about the prices. If I forgot to tell something, ask me in the comments and I'm gonna reply to you and share my impressions about the prices. Overall, I consider Spain to be not that expensive country, especially if you compare it to France, Germany or Austria, where I also had the chance to live. I started my time in Barcelona with Apero Spritz on the first day and I'm finishing on my last day with the same. Okay, it's 1 a.m. I finished packing, clean all the apartments, so I'm ready and oh my god, this is happening. Three months passed way too fast and it's time to move on to a new destination. Okay, until next time. Check out my next video to find out why I decided to leave Spain in the end. And don't forget to push the like button. I see you guys. Bye bye.